50 bucks. You know what, guys? These days, 50 bucks doesn't buy you as much as it used to. A tank of gas, maybe, or a couple movie theater tickets for the family. What if I told you we can get you into a fully functional Windows 10 laptop for 50 bucks? Would you be interested then? If so, I want you to stay tuned. I got something really cool to show you. All right, here we go. All right, guys, so what we're looking at here is the Lenovo X100e. Now, if you're not familiar with this model, I wouldn't be surprised because it was originally released in 2010, and uh, the series has evolved since then into the X100, 150, 200, etc. Now, Lenovo released the X100e at a time where if you wanted some sort of a portable laptop, you had a couple options. Uh, you could go with the netbook route, which was, you know, they were adequate. They were okay machines for basically web-based applications and projects and so on. Or you could go with a higher-end ultra-portable. Uh, which could cost you anywhere between $800 to $1,000 if you wanted a truly capable machine. Well, when the ThinkPad came out, the X100e came out, it had an MSRP around $900, but the actual street price was around the $450 to $500 mark, depending on how you configured it. Let's just go ahead and go through the specs for this model, and we'll let you know what you can expect if you find one of these. Now, there are plenty of X100e's for sale on eBay right now. I did a $49.99 bid with $15 shipping and I was able to score this laptop. I just bid on it, nobody else bid on it, I got it. Uh, the person I bought it from uh, guaranteed that it was gonna be functional, and it was. Uh, there's also plenty of replacement parts out there, so if you like to tinker a little bit, there's a lot you can do to these machines, but real quick, let's go ahead and talk about the specs, and then we'll go ahead and dive into the system and talk about the user experience. Okay, so when you bought this machine, what you basically got from Lenovo, uh, just right out of the box, was a 1.6 gigahertz AMD Athlon Neo single core MV40 processor. Now, there was a later version of it released about a year later of the X100e that had the dual core version of that processor. Uh, look around for that when you start shopping for these if you decide you want one. It came standard with two gigabytes of PC2 5300 DDR2 RAM, which was expandable to four gigs. Uh, it did come with Windows 7 Pro 32-bit. Mine was loaded with a fresh copy of uh, Windows 10 uh, 64 Pro, so it will run Windows 10 just fine with no issues at all. It features an 11.6-inch WXGDA uh, XGA, sorry, HD anti-glare LED backlit display with a resolution of 1366 by 768. So it was not 1080p, but with the anti-glare on it, it is more than adequate for working outside, working under certain lighting conditions, and it's not going to annoy you. Uh, it came with a 250 gigabyte, 5400 RPM SATA hard drive or SATA hard drive. Uh, ATI Radeon 3200 graphics, which at the time had no trouble handling uh, 720p video and still runs it fine uh, these days. It's a little bit pokey, but it runs fine. 802.11 BGN Gigabit LAN, uh, a 4-in-1 card reader, which I'm simply just using it as an SD card reader and it works fine, and a 0.3 megapixel webcam, and a 6-cell lithium-ion battery, I believe it's uh, 5.2 amps if I'm not mistaken, and we'll talk about the battery life here in a little bit. Now, dimensions were 11.1 .1 inches by 8.2 inches by 0.6 backslash 1.2 inches, depending on whether or not if you had the battery pack installed or not. The weight was 3.3 pounds with the 6-cell battery, and that price is configured was $569. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the ports that you're going to get if you buy one of these. If you go to the right-hand side of this machine, you're going to have yourself a USB uh, 2.0 slot. Unfortunately, USB 3.0 is not available on this machine. The SD card reader. You've also got yourself the Kensington lock mount system where you put your cable lock on if you had to uh, lock it down to a desk. It's kind of designed with the uh, commercial business user in mind with the layout. It does have the uh, traditional little red nub that came with uh, ThinkPad laptops through most of their production run. It also has two sets of left click, right click buttons, I guess you could call it, or mouse left or mouse right buttons up here, which you could use in conjunction with the red nub. It also has just your standard left click and right click buttons at the bottom of the keyboard, which I find very easy to use. It seems like an awkward configuration. It's really not that hard to use at all. It had a spill resistant keyboard. Now compared to say the uh, Lenovo N23 Chromebook, I don't know how spill resistant it is. It doesn't have the drain holes on it that the Chromebooks do have. I noticed that it does have metal hinges, which is really cool. You can bend them back basically close to 180 degrees so it could take you know being pushed back without snapping a video cable which was very nice uh, on the left hand side you've got the exhaust ports and we'll talk about the heat this processor produces because it is a bit power hungry and it does produce a lot of heat but that is normal that was just part of the design of the processor and how this thing cools as good as it possibly can uh, you also have two more additional USB 2.0 ports uh, you've got your uh, Ethernet connection on the left hand side and a headphone microphone jack 
On the rear, you had a VGA hookup, which still works fine with uh, just basic projectors, which would upscale the 1080p, but at the time, you know, 720p was the standard that was out for many of the projectors out there, and your little plug-in. Uh, your battery, battery pack actually protruded, protruded out of the rear, and that was a bit of a turnoff for some users because it kind of felt like it could have been integrated better into the machine than it was but uh, I don't really have any issues with it. Now, I bought this primarily to run, uh, let's see, VideoPad Pro is the name of the program. VideoPad is what I use for my YouTube channel, and it has no trouble running it at all. Let's just go ahead and talk about the actual experience. All right, so typing on it, the keyboard is wonderful. It's more or less a full-size keyboard. By moving around some of the keys, Lenovo was able to change the layout a little bit. Now, there's a few keys in some unusual places. I believe the delete key is in a non-traditional location. Uh, a few keys have been reversed. There's a page up, page down key right here by the directional pad, which is kind of nice. But just the keyboard is a joy to type on. You've got almost a full keystroke. It doesn't feel um, very, uh, it doesn't flex at all. It's, it's a fairly rigid keyboard, and it's also very comfortable. To, uh, to type on. Now, as for battery life with this thing, when it was brand new, it would run about three, three and a half hours, depending on how bright you had the screen turned up. And it was one of those things where you, you, you can get a nine cell battery pack for it if you don't mind carrying the extra weight, but depending on what you want to do with it, that determines what kind of use you're going to get out of it. So three and a half hours with just your typical internet based use. Okay, as for the actual web browsing experience, I do find uh, the Internet Edge browser to be a little bit faster than Chrome while using it. You know, basic websites like Facebook or eBay, uh, the Google Suite, stuff like that, you know, Gmail, etc. You're going to be okay to use it with no problems. Um, as for Windows 10 itself, you know, if you do install Windows 10, you do get all the apps that come along with it. You do have all the different tools that you can use. Um, it does two-finger scrolling, but it's a little bit sensitive. I'm going to go in and change the settings on it. So it's not overly sensitive, but uh, when it comes to the apps, you're going to get everything you expect uh, from Windows 10. And again, keep in mind that we are talking about a machine that's, you know, eight, nine years old. So it's not going to be an absolute scorcher. But for what I bought it for, which was basic video processing using my VideoPad program, it works just fine, whether it's transferring videos from the Photos app to the desktop, which I then integrate into the video program, or even just simply viewing the videos, it runs it just fine. Even though this wasn't really designed around 1080p, it can handle high def videos with no problems. Uh, YouTube, on the other hand, is going to be a bit more of a, of, of a problem for you, um, because with so many videos coming up with 1080p and 4K and so on, it really does tax the video card in this machine. So I would recommend uh, that I mean, you can watch some YouTube videos on it, but do be patient if you're using it. Um, otherwise, you know, for the basic use you might have for it, it's going to work just fine. So if you just want something without the frills and you just got some general office processing productivity that you need to accomplish, um, I've been installed LibreOffice 6.1. It's a free app and I've been using it for years, different versions of it, and it doesn't really tax the system too much. You've only got yourself four gigs of RAM on tap, so it's not like you're going to be running a powerhouse machine. Uh, you know, you do have your writer document, your spreadsheet, your presentations, your drawing tools. If you just want to fire up a document, you just double click on it. It opens up in just a few seconds and you are ready to go. So again, if you just want the basics and you don't want to put a lot of money into it, this might make a good uh, first laptop for a child if you just want to introduce them to the basics, but not give them a machine that's so accessible that it could cause distractions with, say, trying to get their homework done. But, you know, for email, for basic communication, say Google Classroom, stuff like that, uh, you're going to be absolutely fine. I do want to open this up in real time, uh, VideoPad Video Editor, which is the program that I use. Um, you know, I'm not doing ex really long videos on this program. You know, most of my videos are between somewhere, sometimes around 10 minutes long, but it does handle the video files with no issues at all. And again, uh, you know, 1080p, it's a little laggy on playback, but just putting the videos together, exporting them, watching them, it's going to be fine. And I did uh, a previous video on this channel on this machine and had no trouble with it. Exporting the videos takes a little bit longer than usual. On my gaming PC that I build, it takes about twice as long to encode and export a 1080p video as the video's length. On this, it takes about three times longer. But for travel, for being on the road, when I'm not really in a hurry to push out material, this little machine works great for it. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get some performance scores and uh, run a Google Octane test on this and just give you an idea as to what you can expect from performance. If you watch the videos on my channel, I do the Octane test quite a bit on the Chromebooks, and we're going to see what happens on this little Windows 10 PC. Okay, guys, so if you're not familiar with uh, Google Octane, it's basically a uh, performance program that you can run on your netbooks and your Chromebooks and all that fun stuff, your computers, and it's going to give you a performance score. Now, this machine has an Octane score of 1,801 
which uh, modern netbooks and modern Chromebooks or modern compact computers are running anywhere between 8,800 and 11,000. So again, if you just want something simple to get some work done and you're not going to be doing any power using, uh, but you just want a basic computer, this is going to be more than adequate for those needs. But from a performance perspective, you know, gaming other than maybe a few minor games from say like the uh, uh, the Microsoft Gaming Store, Solitaire, stuff like that, you're probably not going to be running PUBG or Fortnite anytime soon. All right, so let's go ahead and bring this back for just a few little comments and we will go from there. Okay, so just a few little tips and a few little bits of information I want to leave with you if you decide that you want to go this route. Uh, first of all, replacement batteries can be had between anywhere between $15 and $30, depending if you want to go the generic route. And there's actually some Lenovo original batteries still floating, floating out there that have not been used yet that I've seen over on eBay. Uh, RAM runs between ten to fifteen dollars for two gigs. You can put the four gig in it for twenty-five bucks tops uh, delivered, and that's going to be for quality RAM to put in the machine. Supposedly, there were two four gigabyte modules that were available. Um, I have not seen any for sale yet. It might have been a limited run thing as this model quickly evolved into the X one hundred and fifty, and then the X two hundred, and so on. And supposedly that RAM runs about $150, which would be a lot of money to drop in a system like this. It would make it a much more uh, capable machine. Now, if you're somebody who likes to tinker, uh, you can get yourself a hard drive cloning program for a couple bucks. You can get yourself a, a solid state drive, an SSD drive, say 128 gig or a 240 gig, a 250 gig solid state drive, and you can install it in this uh, the case with very little modifications at all. And then you simply, uh, well, you port over everything to the new hard drive, install it, and you're good to go. So if you want to drop around 100 bucks in this thing, and you can max out the RAM, get yourself a new battery, and get yourself a solid state drive, which runs between 20 and 40 bucks, you can get yourself a much faster machine. And I'm going to do that to this machine as time goes on. Uh, we'll drop a solid state in there. Now, it does not have HDMI out, and that was one thing that surprised a lot of people. But Lenovo essentially marketed this as a business class machine, as like a bulk enterprise machine to distribute to the office. And the majority of the presentations people were going to be doing on this at the time back in 2010 were just done with VGA hookups and HDMI had not become the standard for projectors like it is now. So you're not going to get the HDMI hookup, HDMI hookup capability that you might have had before. But it's still just a fun little machine to play around on. The keyboard's a joy to type on. And just to get basic done, work done, you really can't go wrong. So that's it, guys. The Lenovo um, X100e uh, ThinkPad. Okay, cool little machine. Check it out. Guys, if you like the channel, please like or subscribe, and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We'll have a lot more reviews coming your way, electronics down the pipe, a lot of stuff lined up for you here. And uh, we'll do a, a few modifications to this machine, and we'll let you know how it responds and what kind of progress we have with it, because I don't have a lot of money invested in it, but it's going to be a lot of fun to see what it turns into. So that's it, guys. I want to thank you for watching today. I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. Guys, as you know, we will talk to you soon. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you then. All right, bye-bye.